Anything they want love you can tell anybody? No updates. Speaking of Jordan, shouldn't he be doing push-ups with the offense since his absence is a good reason why they're losing these guys? <coughs> he didn't do them? No, oh, well, his teammates are going to have to hold him accountable. So what have you thought of, <coughs> excuse me, Sean's performance? Obviously, we see the big plays one way or the other, but you get the whole picture. Sean Clifford? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think there's been a couple good plays and then a couple plays that he'd like to have back. And I think that's just, I mean, we're, we're early in camp. Um, I think a lot of times, like we've talked about, a lot of times the brunt of the blame is going to come on the quarterback. And I do think that there's some situations where he's giving guys opportunities and we got to have that mentality of, uh, from a wide receiver standpoint or an offensive standpoint, if that ball's in there, that's my ball or nobody's ball. And so there were a couple of those that came up. Um, and then just guys just being detailed in regards to whether it was Sean. I think we threw, I think the offense threw like five picks the other day, uh, which is maybe a record. But, um, you know, it's, it's not all on the quarterback. Yeah, they, they are, their number one job is you got to take care of the football and you are ultimately responsible for the football. But the guys running the routes, whether it's receiver, tight end, running back, whoever it may be, they got to be detailed in what they're doing as well. And when things aren't quite right and a guy's a little off, whether it's alignment, whether it's, you know, the depth of a route, whatever it may be, and these balls get batted up in the air, I mean, bad things tend to happen. Usually that ball gets batted in the air, it's going to end up in the defensive hands. And we had a couple of those the other day. Is that part of the process here, especially early in camp? Because you've talked a lot in the past about the quarterback and the wide receivers marrying like the footwork of the quarterback to the sure. routes. That's real easy in routes on air, you know what I mean? But now you've got a defense that's allowed to get a little more physical with you, especially when you have a quarterback who maybe hasn't worked with some of these you know, front line guys. Is that part of the process here is finding that timing? and Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's easy when you're doing routes on air and um, there's a lot less variables that go along with that, whether it's a coach standing out over top of a, a receiver or whatever it may be. Um, there's more variables when there's a real defense out there and they're giving you different looks. And that's why all, every rep is so critical. Um, you know, wide outs just recognizing whether they have free access or whether it's a cloud, whatever it may be. Um, but a lot of these situations are coming up right now, which I think is, it's good. It's good for our guys to kind of go through that. And, and many of us, I would say most of us, probably learn more from our failures and mistakes than our successes. So um, there's some tough lessons being learned right now. Those five uh, picks are a good thing, depending on which way. 100%. I love the fact that our defense is getting after the ball uh, doing a really good job of, of not only making plays, but also punching balls out. We've seen a lot of instances of that throughout the course of three days. And, um, yeah, you know, the one thing we always challenge any ball carrier is it doesn't matter if the whistle blew. I mean, you have a responsibility. If you're running back to the huddle, I still expect you to hold on to that ball. And I want our defenders to – remind them of that and, and uh, punch at the football, whether it's a live play or not. And so I think our defense has done a really good job of that. Uh, and you, you can never get enough of it. Even going back to the offseason, Zane had the, the practice with three picks. I and mean, has that kind of been a, not a, it's always a focus, but a, a renewed kind of priority on, on, on attacking and finishing those plays? Yeah, I wouldn't say it wasn't something that we, didn't emphasize. We always, always emphasize that. I mean, that is the greatest indicator of wins and losses is the ball. Um, you want to, that's your competitive advantage. If you can win the turnover battle, you got a really good chance at, at winning the game. And so um, it's always been a big emphasis. I, I just think that, you know, it's the scheme's a little bit different and that could have something to do with it. And, um, but yeah, it, it gets me excited that our defense is making so many plays. Um, because I think that's going to help. That's going to help our football team. What's the plan for Zach Tom as far as team work goes? Uh, it, it's going to be a, a while yet before we put him into those team situations. I would expect if everything goes right, it won't be till after family night. How much are you giving Jacob Eason at, that, at this time? 
Right. Like, how much of it, the offense, does he know? Can you get him everything when you're out there? Or is it just I mean, we, that's what we're doing. So whether that's realistic or not, I, I think time will tell. I mean, you want to be mindful of it, I think. Um, a guy that hasn't had as much experience, but he's been in similar systems. He had some time in San Francisco um, with Kyle, and um, you know he's. I think just there's a lot of crossover. No matter what scheme you're in or system you're in, it's just putting the 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 terminology is usually what separates. Matt, what have you seen out of Kadeem Telford, and what did he do to earn that number one spot on the offensive line yesterday? Hey, he's done. He's done some nice things. Uh, we're going to keep shuffling it up and and try to create a competitive situation and may the best man win. Is there any concern on um, Josh Myers? It looked like he kind of went down on Wednesday and was a little slow to get up at the end of practice. Yeah, I think I think Josh will be okay. Um, unfortunately, he's he's not going to be here today. He's got uh, a personal matter, and I, w I want to be respectful of that that he's going through, and so. Uh, he will not be with us today. Now, what's your Jason, sense of how tight? Um, we now have Jordan, you weren't really concerned, going to get mental reps. Is there going to be a point where you go a little bit more concerned? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you'd like to have him out there. And the one thing that, I mean, that's the way I look at it, it's out of my control. So I, I'm just going to focus on the guys that we have in there and certainly uh, continue to challenge him from a mental standpoint. Um, and he's getting good work in post practice, but obviously we'd all love him to be out there, and I think that's going to help put our team in the best position possible. Just him getting that rapport with with everybody and uh, leading our not only our offense but our team. What's your sense of how Tyler Davis is doing coming back from the ACL, and just can you you know take us through any communication you had with him throughout the whole rehab process to get him? Yeah, back? T TD is a guy that you talk about somebody that does everything the right way. He 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 is that guy from the moment it happened to um, throughout the process, and I think he's just you know it, it's great for him to get back out there. Um, you know I, I think he. Like anybody coming back from a significant injury, it's, there, there's going to be some some uh, struggles along the way. Just whether it's dealing with soreness, uh, that that's to be expected. But I think in terms of his approach and the things that he can control, he is on top of everything. Matt, what's your plan ramping up into full pads? This you're saying tomorrow? Whenever, whatever your schedule is. Yeah, right? tomorrow. Tomorrow will be in pads. So that, that is the, the ramp up period for, that's allowed by the CBA and all that. So um, we're going to be in pads as, as many opportunities as we can, provided that we're not overloading our guys. But uh, I think it's going to be important for us just it, really from a, obviously a physical standpoint, but a lot of it's up front, just protecting the offensive line, the defensive line, it'll allow our guys to, you know, um, start to bull rush a little bit more because you, you never want that when guys are not in pads. It's going to allow our run game to focus and do a little bit more of the gap schemes, you know, um, where we try to shy away from that when we're, when we're not in pads. Um, and then just activate different parts of our offense and defense, quite frankly. Some more, you can run stunts up front and just things that we, we try not to, to do to put ourselves in a, in a tough position. Because um, ultimately, at the end of the day, yeah, you're always, you're trying to work everything. You're, you want your guys to, to continue to strive and push themselves and get better and better and better. But at the same time, there's certain things that put you a little bit more susceptible to injury when uh, you don't have pads on. What's the difference um, in the rules of engagement between shells and pads? What do you, what do you tell them is, is OK and what isn't? Well, uh, it's, it's a lot for the coaches. Um, just not putting our guys in position. We're not calling a bunch of gap schemes, like I just mentioned, all those things. It's really the gap schemes on offense, a lot of the transportation type runs. Um, and then defensively, just trying to avoid all. You want more straight rushes, avoid the the picks, the stunts, um, and then 
making sure those edge rushers or whoever, really, it doesn't matter, any of the rushers, they're working edges as opposed to going down the middle of somebody. Tomorrow, how critical do you feel it is to get something done with Jordan by then, considering you never want anyone to miss anything, but the, the padded work is, is kind of the real football stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everything's important, especially the quarterbacks aren't getting hit. So, um, yeah, we. I, I mean, shoot, I, I wish he was out there. And, again, it's out of my control, and I'm going to just let it play out.